Hey guys, it's now when your squishy puzzle here. In this video, I have an unboxing from the cubicle.us. So, just my cheese square one broke, and my Kong Zymachi Pyramid actually broke too. Yeah. Um, what happened was I figured I'd get some replacements. So, this is what I got. And I also got a replacement part for my Woohoo Austin Critics. Because they're about to be discontinued, so I figured I'd just get the part. I think I also got some other replacement parts, so I'll just see what I got. Exactly. And oh, so before I forget, I have these fidget stuff in here that I got. So these were at the holiday boutique sale from school, and it was like a month and a half ago, but I kept on forgetting to unbox them. But now I finally remember to unbox them. And I guess since it's like a small unboxing, I guess it would kind of go with it. And then I got these two. Um, from one of my relatives for the holidays. So, yeah. I don't know what's in here. And this is obviously an Infinity Cube. You saw this on the cubicle. So, that's cool. Yeah, it's just a regular... It's just a regular, like, blank black one. So, let's just open the box. Because I'm packaged. Got a box. So, yeah. Um, this one isn't that big. It only has, like, it only has two puzzles. I'm going to get the YJ Guam. Another YJ U on for one. But I, but the core, I, I remember dropping on the floor, but when the, yes, they actually sent the part, yes, they able to send the part for this. Oh, and then there's the woo part, oh yeah, that's what it was. Oh, so I lost the centerpiece to my cute Coretta when it popped in school, and then I looked, like, and I asked, and everyone if I could look in their, like, binders and stuff, and they said it was fine if I could look for my part, and then, I, I like, I didn't find it anywhere, and then, I was... Just in my, I was just like looking through my, I was like, I'm going to my binder in general to get something, and then I saw the part. So I just emailed the cubicle. Um, later, um, when I got home from school that day, to cancel the replacement part for the Houston Red Six by Six. So yeah. So I got the Exxon Bell Pyramids to replace the Kong's I made cheap pyramids that broke, and now I found a little cheese growing. I'll make sure I don't bring it anywhere, and I'm not going to. Drop it on the floor because I don't want the core stripping again. So let's just start with the replacement parts. So so for the replacement parts, I have the Moe Magnetic Scoop Limited Edition replacement part and the Chi uh, Six by Six replacement part. Oh wow, it came with the screw. I didn't need the screw, but it came with it. That's cool. Okay. And then I have this. Okay, so I'm just going to put this. Where's my woo There's my woo -ha. So I'll just put this in the bag where my woo is. What happened was that broke. Centerpiece broke. So yeah. So I'm just gonna put this in this bag. So that's good. Even though the stickers weren't actually, it's actually in clearance because of the Wuha V2. So it only costs $20 instead of $32. So I recommend you get it for collection. But if you just want a good sticker stick, get the Wuha V2. And when it goes on sale, it's only $25. Because it's kind of like sluggish and the pieces break easily, kind of. And then I got the replacement part for this because they still have them in stock on the cubicle. And even though it didn't show up for the screw replacement parts, I'll just show the screenshot. So yeah, I'll just put this replacement part in now. See, it's kind of broken. And it broke when I was trying to put it in. Piece. And after it popped. So yeah, just make sure it doesn't pop. Um, we're moving back next to the limited edition version. So yeah, um, this part, that's kind of like... Or just like... Look where the pieces fit in. And kind of just like... Move this. Like 45 degrees like you would the 3x3. And kind of just... Wait, you know, no, 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 not there. Wait. There. And then you just kind of get it in. But be very careful. Because the piece could break. And I might actually be putting it in wrong. So. The, the, one of these two things. That's lower. This one is lower. So that means that it goes under here. Because this one is higher up. So that means that it, the. Lower one actually goes under because the one that's lower down has a space for the higher one to fit into above. That that that's actually how it works for all scoops. So just put the lower one in and then 
in 45 degrees. Well, actually, well, it's actually 60, but whatever. Half turn because scoop is 120 degrees. Is one, two, three, three. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Even without the stickers, I can still show you guys. But one, two, three. And actually, surprisingly, um, these pieces are actually called edges. The one that look like centers. These, um, they actually are called edges. And then the ones that are the, the corners that are stationary. Um, obviously they function the same as the corners that aren't stationary, like in the, like, not in the mechanism, but just in solving, but the corners that are stationary are called the centers. Yeah. Again, I'll just show what the uh, picture for the scoop page on the cubicle that you guys... Yeah, I'll just... So, yeah. I mean, like, I meant scoop replacement part. So, yeah. I'll just put this back in this box anyway, because why not? I don't know what I'll do with this. I don't know if I'm going to eventually give it away or something. Or maybe give it to a friend or trade it with someone or sell it. I don't know. Anything. I don't know if I want to do a 100 subscribers giveaway because I don't really know how to do the giveaway. How to do a giveaway or anything like that. And plus, by the time this video upload, is uploaded, I'll probably be like 110 or 120. So, yeah, I don't know, actually. I don't know. I'm not promising a, a giveaway or anything. But I'm at 95 subscribers right now as I'm recording this. So, thank you guys for, um... Subscribing to everyone who has subscribed, and also if you do subscribe, can you please be active because I do not want any active subscribers and right now. I'm just trying to make sure that there are, is no air in this because if there is, then it won't really fit in the box. And I don't want to like put a hole in it because I don't want any this stuff to fall out. The magnet is in here, it's right there. See, so yeah, <clears throat> whatever. So I'll just put this back in the box, and let's move on with the unboxing. It's actually my other moving magnetic cube, the replacement one. So yeah, let's move on with the unboxing. So actually, I was going to order a replacement part for this centerpiece because they sent the wrong cap with it. Also, I couldn't just. Like, they sent the, the cap for in these inner centers, not the one that had, like, the Florian rod thing. But I could always just super glue this down and sand it down be, to match the shape of the actual piece itself. Because it's not, like, an edge piece because e or a corner piece. You, because if I wanted to mag even if I didn't want to magnetize it, I wouldn't have to take apart the piece because you don't put magnets in there. And I could always just, like, take um, break them out of the super glue. It's not that hard. And actually, the reason why this cap wasn't going in is because I, I always thought that... That white thing was the glue, but it actually broke off into the cap, like the little peg from the cap broke off into the plastic, just like my X Men Galaxy Mega Minx. And the reason why I like that I don't use the Mega Minx sensor for Chi, so the Chi Chi Hang S and the X Men Galaxy is because they're like too unstable, and also like Galaxy have the cap that come off easily. It's really annoying. So yeah, but, but maybe the Galaxy V2 or even the Keeper's Home Galaxy V2 M will change that. But I really want an oh, an Alhan. So lately, I've been practicing Mega Minx and 3x3. I'm working on sub 30 seconds on 3x3 and sub 3 minutes on Mega Minx. So yeah. Um, I'll just put a link in the description about the video that I saw for sub 30 chips. So yeah. Um, and then, the reason why I use the little magic over better cues is actually because the little magic... Um, is it stickerless, but for example, my Volk 3, my Cubicle Volk 3M isn't stickerless. And the logo actually fell off, but I could just put it on, on another one anyway, so that's not, yeah, that's not a big deal, but it doesn't really matter. But, I just had this, it's not stickerless, and the reason why I didn't get any stickerless, even though I like stickerless, is because I just got the Aqua Blue Limited Edition for collection. So, yeah. That's what kind of like this, like, it has, like, a main point of cutting and stuff, but whatever. Yeah. And then, about my, and yeah, I also kind of do 4x4, four four, like, yeah, but not really. I guess I'll just go back to that after I achieve my Mega Minx and 3x3 three three goals. I might actually be able to push, like, sub 25 seconds on 3x3. Three three, and maybe, like, sub 2.5 minutes or sub 2 minutes on Mega Minx. But, yeah, whatever. So, the reason why I choose this Mega Minx over these, because, so, for example, the Galaxy, it's just unstable, kind of kind of like locks up and catches maybe it's just my tension but it corner twists a lot too so now the caps even come off 
Like, this one, I'm turning it in general. And actually, some of the cats have broken into the plastic. Like, this one. Example. Like, yeah. See? Yeah, so, that's why I don't use this. And then the chi hang S is also unstable. And also corner twists. And also has catches and lockups. So, yeah. So, that leaves me left with one option. The use of the magic. However, you like the use of the magic, but you want an upgrade. Or, like, the use of the magic V2. I recommend just getting the Moe Alhan. It's really good. And I've seen videos on the field. It seems similar. And has the same stability. So, yeah. And, yeah. And I and I haven't tried out the Galaxy V2M from Cuber's Home. And also, Angstrom will probably come out with that when Angstrom comes to the cubicle. So, yeah, that'll be cool. Now, I also have the Anthea S2M. I used this before, too. And then the GTS 2M. But, as you guys just saw there, it does have a corner twisting problem. So, that's why I don't really use it. So, yeah. And then the Chi Word W kind of locks up and stuff. So, yeah, that leaves you up with the usual little magic. But hopefully, I'll, I'll get, like, a few glad I'm here at 2M. Or, like, Magtide my little magic. Or something like that. Yeah, there's no people who have little, um, little magic M. Yeah, and for the little magic, you actually need strong magnets for the... Yeah. Little magnets, so if you're going to magnetize this, you actually need to use stronger magnets. Or, yeah, strong magnets. I'll put Cubian Coded as unboxing of one of, of one of these, but magnetic, with strong magnets in the description. And also, if I say that, I'll put something in the description, but it's not in the description. For any of my videos, just remind, can you can just comment down below, reminding me to put it in the description. Because, yeah. So, yeah, um... Okay, so now let's finally move on to these fidget stuff. So now we can just do this, these fidget stuff. I actually don't know what's in here. It says EDC fidgeter. So yeah, let's see what's in here. I wonder what this is. Actually, this is exciting. Oh, this is so cool. Let's see. Neo Diamond Balls. Oh, I did not ball them. Neo cubes. That's actually cool. Yeah. So. Oh, it's actually awesome. These are Neo cubes. Whoa. Okay, okay, okay. I don't want to like mess this thing up. I just want to get it back into this little cube shape of six by six. I'm messing it up already. Like, the polarities and stuff. Yeah. Oh, if I, oh, if I try, try magnets on a cube with this, what? No, use, um, Neodyne discs. Because Paradox Cubing's video about, of him using Neo balls to magnetize a cube. Or m multiple cubes, actually. Oh, I, what? This is, this thing is so cool, guys. Yeah. What? Whoa. Oh, looks like some Star Wars ship thing. What? Whoa! And oh, it's sticking to it. The metal thing. Oh wow! Whoa! This thing is so cool. Yeah. Okay, so let's see if I can. Let's see the longest. Oh, let's move it down. That's in frame. Let's see the longest chain I can make with this thing. I got this for the holidays from my relatives. So yeah. Thank you, them. Along with this infinity, infinity cube that I showed you guys. So, yeah. Wait, I'm going to fold it up here, maybe? No. Maybe here. Try to make it even. Whoa, this is actually just so cool. What is this? This, what, it, this is, these, these things are so, this is awesome. Okay, yeah, so. 
I'm trying to bring it back into the cube shape that it originally was in. And now it's just reminding me of square one, which I also like to do. And warning you guys who don't like square one or clock, I actually don't have a clock, but it is fun. I've used a simulator before, and I saw a clock simulator on Ruwix, on Ru, Ruwix.com, which I'll link in the description. It's fun. And the best clock is the original Rubik's clock from 1988, but these, those are, like, really rare. Because the thing is with Rubik's, as you guys know, they're, like, stiff, stable, clicky, and stuff like that. But the other clocks are, like, Chinese ones, like Lingao and, I think, maybe Cube Twist. So, yeah, Lingao is the best one to get, other than the Rubik's one, which is, like, really, which is basically unavailable. Also, Rubik's has the best, best magic. However, I'll link a description... Link in the description of Lego Wizzy 3's tutorial on how to magnetize the pins of a clock to make them better. Okay, so finally I got this done. Like I said, if I didn't put something in the description, just tell me so I know as a, re a reminder. And then I will put it in the description because then I'll know. So yeah, let's go back to this later. So now let's actually... So, yeah, so now let's just move on to the other things, the other fidget things, and then the actual puzzle themselves. Now we'll just move on with the unboxing. Yeah. And, yeah, so, um, when you have it in, like, like, yeah, so just break it apart with your, like, not with your very hands. That won't really work. Well, obviously, uh, here, when I had that 4 by 2 thing, I was just breaking apart with my bare hands, and then, like, it just became this whole entire double mess. So, it's, like, you like... Anything that's like, um, tall enough to fit through the magnet, like, tall enough, like, thick enough, like, maybe that thick, I guess. Oh, yeah, whatever, and then, like, it has to be, like, thin and, like, flat and sturdy, kind of, I guess, yeah. So, now let's move on to the, the rest of these fidget things. So, we'll start with the Infinity Q. I want to open this without ripping the box. See if I can open it from the bottom easier. Yeah. Yeah, so it's going to be easier to open it from the bottom, so. Okay. Come back when I can open this. And finally, guys, it's not open. That's cool. So yeah, it's an infinity cube. Uh, yeah. Not really much to say. At least this one won't rip or anything. It has like latches and stuff. These they're just paper. Like this one. Kind of ripped, actually. Yeah. Just a handoff thing. Just like this one, which is also a handoff. I got this in either the school year 2013 or school year 2013 or 2014. And I got this one in the end of 2016. So, yeah. I don't know. Anywhere from like September to November 2016. I actually didn't know what this was. He was on until I found what it. Or, like, Twisty Puzzle somewhere until I found what an Infinity Cube was. I don't know if I should include this in my collection account. I currently do. It's in the miscellaneous slash bad puzzle section. Yeah, whatever. So, Infinity Cubes actually go around 600. You might think that's just three. One, two, three. But it's actually six because, look. It's actually six because. One, two, three, four, five, six. Yeah, just some random. Thing, just like this one. Yeah. Okay, so. I actually saw um, someone doing it with like one hand, and like, he's either doing this thing really fast with one hand, and, and he was either crazy, but like just like moving around really fast, and like, and to go to all different like positions slash shapes, and, and it was in one hand. I think it was like crazy bad cubership to the cubicle. Vlog, or it might have been Jared Hebrew, whatever. 
for you. I'll put a little bit in the description. Okay, so now let's do now let's move on to these um fidget I mean spidget fenders. Oh, yeah, fidget fenders. So yeah, these fidget spinners. So yeah, let's, let's move on to these fidget spinners. So yeah, okay. Yeah, add to my fidget stuff collection. The change my camera angle. Yeah, I just use this tissue box and put it on. So what I do is I have this jar and it happens to be a jar of play-doh but obviously i don't care about what's inside I just care that it's a jar and then this kleenex tissue box yeah that's actually what i use and then when i lower my camera angle it's like that and so i'll actually put the link a link in the description for to um, a 50 dollar really good tripod and so yeah i might get it actually and then if you use a smartphone i'll also put a link to a holder that tap that um, hold on to the smartphone and actually connect to the tripod so you can use your smartphone on it too. And I think a selfie stick on the part where your phone actually attached to on a selfie stick might work for that, but yeah. So I'll put both those in the description. And guys, if I miss anything in the description, just please tell me in the comments down below because now I see you know what I mean. So yeah, let's see if this spins on the bearings. No, it does not spin on the bearings. Annoying. But yeah, then again, these cost a $2 each, so that makes sense. Not that good. Yeah, not that good actually. Only two dollars each. This one is actually cool. It's like, whoa. Yeah. Can't do this with one with your with, with just your thumb. It doesn't kind of spin for long. So yeah, that was actually yeah, about a minute or even longer. And then turn the bearings. Yeah, I actually like this fidget spinner that I have. Yeah, that's a problem when you don't have a real tripod or camera falls over. A phone, whatever. I actually like this one a lot, but it broke, so. It's actually really good, as you can see. It broke. Which is why it slides a lot. Yeah, it has like it has these things which are really good. And this fell over again. My arm hit into it when I was spinning the fidget spinner. So yeah. And then my dad actually suggested that I lube my fidget spinner. So I put some weight one in it or something like that, but it slowed down. I should have put in DM. So I'd like the sound of it. So yeah, now I don't have a fidget spinner with the sound. And this thing, wait, no, not this. This fidget spinner. It's okay, but doesn't have the indent here. It's not like indented a little bit, just flat here. There's another handoff thing, actually. I press that and then I'll go into the carpet. 
Just have to kind of like hold it in place like that. Yeah, whatever. So, actually, with my glue strong end, the magnet just lodged again. So, I think what I'll do is I might just like glue the magnets back in with the key. I can just get a cubicle, um, lab magnetization kit and I can use a super glue to magnet back in and I can always, like, um, if any magnets are missing, I can just use the magnets in that kit to replace them. And also, I can just use them in general to magnetize any cube I want to magnetize. So, yeah. Um, like maybe you should little magic because the magnets in the ma in the Eastern little magic um, or in the cubic home puzzles are actually kind of like lighter and you need strong magnets. For, like I said, you need strong magnets for a little magic. So yeah. And if I ever have to re-lubricate this, I know what to, what to lubricate it because on the cubicle pro shop page, um, they say that they lubricate the inner layers with tracks to 10k and the, the outer layers with equal speedy and then the whole entire thing with DNM37. So I'll show it on the screen right here, right now. So yeah, guys, and about my Yuong, this one is on the floor and it kind of is like faster, but it's not that loose. I mean, like it feels about as loose as this, which which doesn't have a strip core or anything because of this. How the cubicle did do it. This is my cubicle hold square one, but yeah. Just be careful that you don't misalign it and actually turn it because I kind of have some crack in the pieces, but I don't know. But yeah, just make sure you don't, don't like, forward to turn like that or anything like that on accident. So yeah. And, uh, I, Volt MS might help, but I might actually get the ancient research one when ancient research comes to the cubicle. Uh, yeah, but this one I knew it had to strip core because, like, yeah. Okay. Look at this. Yeah, and then this one, I guess it is a lot looser than before. And still, it doesn't do anything crazy like that. So yeah. Um, and also for the Wuha, yeah, I think I said this already, but um, the centerpiece, um, the the internals on all the Wuhas are primary. So yeah. So it didn't even matter that the stickers are already discontinued. So yeah, let's just move on to the actual puzzles themselves, guys. So yeah. Let's move on to these puzzles. X-Men, Bell Paramount, and Cheese Square One. So let's finally open these up. So I'm going to do the Cheese Square One first because you guys have already seen this on my channel. I already unboxed one. It's just a replacement. And this is actually a replacement for my Congress on Michi Paramount. But I've never had a Bell Paramount before. So yeah. Don't use the pamphlet. You don't need the pamphlet. Just watch like a 1, 2, 3 tutorial. How it's growing. Link in the description. So yeah. And also if I don't have it in the description, just remind me. Okay, yeah. So this square one is actually really good, but just make sure you don't drop any square one on the floor because the core will strip. Or just get the cubicle hold square one. And you're like, oh, $27, so much. But, yeah. But, yeah, um, it's like getting a phone case. Like, the Volt costs $14. So, getting the Pro Shop one is like having a, is like having a case, is like having a $13 case for it. Or even if you normally get the U on, Getting the vote is like having um twenty seven dollar is like having a twenty dollar case for it that also increases the performance. And actually, my other one was like yellow on the inside, but this is I think like white or primary on the slice. Yeah, whatever. Yeah, the sandiness breaks in. Eventually, it gets better. I'm still going to take my pro shop one because I don't want um I don't want the cord strip again. So yeah, I'm just going to take my Pro Shop one because of that. See, the core will strip. Wait, maybe it's on this side. That, this side has Yeah, the core strips. Oh, this one. Oh, my other one had um, a blue nylon thing. Yeah. So the core does strip whenever it falls. On, even like from 1.5 feet. And that's fine because it's carpet. And it's only like, that was only like 6 inches on carpet. But still, the core will strip. It'll get like looser and looser and pop a lot, and then eventually it'll just fall apart. However, the cheese grow one does have better corn cutting, so it would be cool if the cubicle could actually like bring back the original cubicle square one. Yeah. Surprisingly, the cheese grow one, the original cheese grow one, has better corn, corn cutting than the X Men Volt square one. Look, look at that. That's almost like. That's like. That's like. A full one, like full 30 degrees. 
It's actually just really good corner cutting for a square one. But then this, yeah, it doesn't really have that much, that much corner cutting. It might be the tension or something. I don't know. I tried to, to get an out of the box bolt to compare it with. And OOTB is and for out of the box, if you guys were wondering. But now let's move on to the final thing in this unboxing. The X-Man Bell Paraminx. It's magnetic. Yeah, so I've heard that the magnets on the inner on the magnets on the centers are actually very light, but the tips are like, strong. So let's ch check the tips. Oh, they're actually not that strong. I think tension might be loose on mine or something. Corner cutting is okay, but I don't know. It is out of the box. Yeah. I don't want to force anything because I don't want the cord to eventually break from bending problems. Like that, like what happens like kind of made. Cheap earrings. I actually like the make she better, but yeah. Obviously, mine broken, so if I could get another one, or maybe a pyramid score, but I kind of saw it, and the screws kind of looked like they might have been broken too, or something. I don't know. Oh, I put it on the way. See, I'll do a solve on this because it's the pyramid that doesn't take long. So, let's see. Yeah, I'm actually bad at pyramids, guys. Just, yeah, repair for. My nubby knit for my nubness. Prepare f to see a nub solve a pyramid. Okay, yeah. So prepare to be to see a nub solve a pyramid. So I'm gonna start by making a U. I'm doing U first method to develop for E. Oh. Well. Actually, I guess we have this instead. Oh. 23.92. Yes, guys, I am bad. at turns. Well. Yeah. I like the Kong design one better. Or even the Z cube concave dot. So my corner is kind of strip on this one. It's on this centerpiece. So, basically, to tighten it, I just do this. Wait, no, no. It's, wait, yeah, this centerpiece. Yellow, white, and blue. So to tighten it, I do this. That doesn't really strip. And to loosen it, I do this. So if it's popping a lot, I'll just do that. So that it'll get tighter. It's a core strip, that's why. So yeah. It's stripped so the screws can come out. Yeah, this has good grip. And also, guys. I actually realized that there are some magnets for this. I don't know if they're like a different strength than the ones that come in here, but whatever. And then this pamphlet, um, obviously has the instructions for solving the pyramids, but it also has some about the magnets, but Chinese, so I can't read it. Yeah, but like that's like different strengths. Magnets, and you can also like uh, the magnets, and you can also like change the tension of the magnets. So yeah, guys, that wraps up for this video. This um quick small unboxing, well, maybe not quick, but like the yeah, actual puzzle quick. See ya. Thank you guys for watching. Thank you guys for 95 subs. We're getting really close to 100. Thank you to everyone who subscribed and watched my videos. Also, if you're a subscriber, can you like be active? Because I don't want any of your subs, too. Or just don't subscribe, I guess. So, yeah. Thank you guys for watching. See you in the next video. Bye, and always have a nice day.